All right. All right. I'm excited. I haven't seen this man in a minute. All right, Instagram. This is the last hoorah for now, at least. Let's get this thing going. Ava, how you doing? Hello to you, too. What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up, Dom? What's happening? Hello, hello, everybody. All right, y'all. It's about that time. Okay. Spence, the young legend himself, is about to join us. So I'm excited for this. All right, everybody? Let's do this. There he is. Hey. hey. Yo, what's up, homie? How you doing, man? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Is that is that a... Oh, my gosh. Hold on a sec. It's so bright. Yeah, man, you're glowing, bro. <laughs> yeah, you shine on a, on a normal situation, bro, but this is a little bit more excessive, homie. <laughs> How you doing, man? Jeez, I've been great, bro. Oh yeah, you're right, bro. It has been it's been it's been a minute, man. The last time I think I saw you, this was completely random. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we were on the rooftop of some kind of a. It was like a not a restaurant, but like a bar or something like that. Like literally on King Street. What am I thinking yeah. of? Ah, uh, where was this? Oh man, I know exactly the place. Uh, yeah, man, I ran into you and a couple of your buddies. Actually, I can't remember what his name, what the name. Oh my gosh! It wasn't a, it wasn't a tiff thing, was it? I don't think so. I don't think so. Unless did we see each other during tiff at some point? Well, we saw each other a few few years ago at, at tiff for sure. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, man, it's 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 been it's been far too long. It has been. It has been, bro. But what but what have you been up to, man? How's been quarantine life treating you? I. Uh, it's been. Uh, you know, it's it's been challenging, as I'm sure it's been for everyone. But uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, you know it's important to stay safe, and you know. But yeah, I, mean, it, I don't know. Like, a lot of drawing, a lot of like listening to music, a lot of watching movies, a lot of, of course. spending time with my family. I'm back in Miss uh, Mississauga with my family now, so uh, that's been really good. It's been really good to see them all, and and yeah, yeah, man. What about yourself? Oh man, um, always doing music, bro. Always doing music. I've been buried in lyrics as of late. Um, I've been trying to get my creative juices flowing, bro, and just trying to really, you know, get back to what I enjoy doing. Uh, aside from acting, of course, but I mean, just getting the music side of things moving along more. Yeah. Um, you know, same thing like you, bro. I've been watching a lot of movies and stuff like that, and I actually, specifically, more so music documentaries, just to see how you know, other artists, you know, what their stories were like, what they do right. to kind of, you know, get to a certain thing. But um, that's how I've been You're mainly... up for when your music documentary is. Uh, that's the goal, bro. You know it, man. That's the goal. And you know what? I don't know how I forgot about this, but I guess it's been so long, so I forgot. But you're sketching, homie. There's times where way back, way back, where you'd show me your sketches, even on set or whatever, and I'm like, yo, you do it within, like, all of a sudden, you're quiet. Okay, you're just quiet and you're focused in. And all of a sudden, I turn around and I see you already like halfway through this, you know, Spencer Max masterpiece that he would come up with. You had a Joker phase, actually. You had you were drawing a lot of Joker. I remember that some time back. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, that's good that you're sketching still, bro. And, and, and I've always wanted to ask you, do you ever plan on like, is it more so for you personally? Or do you ever like think of like trying to sell it in some kind of way or like, you know what I mean? I've thought about it. Uh, I've thought about it. I, I remember uh, I, I did this movie with uh, an, a fellow Degrassi alum, uh, Dylan Everett. Oh, Dylan. And, oh, shit. Uh, okay. And we we were trying to make like a like a kids book for for a minute there. It's actually really he he wrote this like really cool idea, and, and so I was drawing for that. But man, I I, I read a lot of comic books and stuff. So that'll be it'll be cool to maybe one day like make a graphic novel but i don't know I, uh, I have to do a lot of work at the moment it's just you know it's a waste of time really but yeah fair yeah. And, and and i'm reading up on the fans yeah fans for those of you who do not know this man is very talented aside from acting and everything else that he does his sketching ability is off the hook i'm telling you that. so oh, you're cutting out sorry oh am i oh okay there we go 
Okay, good, good, good. Um, no, I was just saying to the fans that, you know, you're multi-talented, bro. So if that graphic, uh, graphic novel ever comes up, make sure to let us know, bro. We want to support you in that kind of field as well, bro. Well, do, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. But, um, but aside from, you know, sketching and everything like that, have you been trying to keep active with acting, like doing some of the workshops that's been out, uh, coming around, or have you just been, like, you know, taking it easy in that regard? I've been doing, uh, I've been just, like, it's 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 been a, a bit of a of a dry spell, huh? not not a lot of auditions. But I mean, I've been um, like looking up a lot of monologues from like movies and TV shows I love, and uh, and kind of just working on those and, and trying trying to stay somewhat uh, you know in it. But uh, it's tough, dude. You know, there's not a lot of auditions. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, man. Everything that's going on with the pandemic and stuff, it, it really really slow down but also it'll like change the way things go especially let's say um because it's going to be coming back when things come back set wise um it, it's the whole platform because actually sent out a whole thing where the platform is going to be different you know what i mean where uh food especially because usually this catering there would be like a pretty much for fans who don't know a buffet style of of presenting the meals and stuff and now it's going to be more so packaged you know what I mean? So you pre-do it, you know what I mean? And just so many different things where... You, a lot of things. You know what I mean? And Spence, you know better than than you know better than most when we were on set on Degrassi. It was just so, like, fluent. Everyone was just... You know, there was... You never had to worry about anything. It was just literally, you know, going yeah. through the motions and stuff, right? Like... Well-oiled machine, man. Yeah, and, and then... Man, down to an art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. That's and then cool. now... It's going to be a lot more stringent, at least until things come about, like, you know, something like a vaccine or whatever, like thing, something that's concrete enough where people know that if they did catch it, there's a, you know, relative uh, uh, cure for that or whatever the case may be. You know, I mean, sense of comfort is what people are aiming for because we have no answer right now. So everything has just been flipped over. But um, uh, but nonetheless, things are they're trying to, you know, work to normal, uh, getting things back to normality in some kind of way. But meanwhile, you know, we just got to keep our sanity and stuff like that and being home and stuff. And how is it being home for you, bro? Are you used to, like, being home more so or do you like being out? You know what? Uh, I go back and forth, but uh, I've really, really enjoyed being home. Ah. You know, I, 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 I've been moved out of home for, gosh, like four or five years or something like that. Mm. And, and I haven't had, like, as, as much kind of quality time with – with my parents and with my family as uh, you know what I mean? As I, and, and now I have that opportunity and it's so great, man. It's so great. The, you know, it's awesome. So I, I've, I've, but I've, um, I've adjusted, you know, I've climatized them. I'm, I'm, I'm officially like a homebody, <laughs> but, but yeah. What about, what about you? Uh, me, man, I'm a, I'm an adventure kind of guy, bro. I like being out. I like out. experiencing new things and, you know me, bro. You know me dancing all the damn time on set. So I like going right. out dancing all the time. You know, I'm so, you know, I'm an extrovert by nature. You know what I mean? But then at the same time, I remembered uh, when I was younger, I was a very much a, of an introvert, bro. I had no problems you know, being inside either. So that side of me is definitely coming back for sure. And right. I found complacency, actually. I'm really surprised to say that. In the beginning, for sure, it was hard, 1,000%. But uh, nonetheless, as time went by and I was able to find things to do at home and again, family crucial part of it too. Cause I was able to just spend time and, and you kind of look back and you're brought back to basics and you're like, wow, this is what I've been missing out on. Cause you know, you, we both, you know, and everyone else I'm sure are guilty of um, just getting caught up with our lives. You know what I mean? Work, Absolutely. you know, school for people, whatever the case may be, it just takes your mind off the simple things. And, and honestly, the lockdown forced me to focus on that again. And like, you know, I'm I'm just able to uh, to enjoy that now. But uh, a quick shout out to uh, uh, Pride Month. Some of our fans have been showing yeah. up, yeah. celebrating. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, shout out to anybody you know of the LGBTQ community. We love you guys. We support you guys as always. Happy That's Pride cool. Month! Yeah. Just gotta shout that out. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, man. Um, what was I gonna ask you? Uh, yeah, bro. Another thing that's been going on because now we thought 2020 brought on one pandemic and now another one 
that has been around for a minute is also taking over oh my the God. world, bro. I was about to say social media, but that's not even it. The world literally, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, fighting for justice and the, 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 the battle between racist and anti-racist, you know what I mean? The whole thing, bro. Well, how's it been like for you? Like, how has that been? You know what I mean? Just witnessing all this and seeing all that happen. It's, it's, uh, it makes you sick to your stomach, man. It's, uh, God, what, what a crazy, crazy thing is going on. And, and it's, you know what I mean? It's been, it's been, I think really important to just kind of like listen and, uh, you know, stay as educated as, as, as I possibly can about everything because it's, uh, man, it's crazy. Yeah, man, it's, it's nuts. And honestly, this is why, you know, especially for us and the fans out there can definitely agree where we, we were so fortunate to be on a show like Degrassi where they're super transparent about those kind of issues. And, and I, you know, I was thankful to have had a storyline kind of similar to that, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, uh, I won't have to get deep into that, but it's just, it's great to know that Lyndon Stephen created this platform of acceptance, unity, um, positivity as a whole, to be honest, and just comfort, you know what I mean? Where you can walk into a, um, a working space and be treated just like any other person, you know what I mean? And, and that's something that I'm just so thankful to say that, you know, we both have been a part of a show that really just preaches that. That's their ideology. That's what they represent. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, the cast and crew alike, they all share that same, you know, uh, ideology. So, you know, for us, especially our generation, this is where I, I, I definitely have hope for the future is that our generation, if you think about it, homie, um, literally when we were both introduced in, uh, to Degrassi, whenever that was, because it feels like eons ago, yeah. um, you know, we walked in, having social equality be the norm. You know what I mean? It wasn't something you had to think about and then you had to turn it on. It was just something that was always on. You know what I mean? You just walked into it. It was a normal thing. So to see what's going on stateside and also in our backyard, that being Toronto or Canada as a whole, when you see certain things to the contrary, you're like, whoa, what the heck? What what is that? That makes no sense. You know what I mean? That ain't right. That's why it really turns people, you know? It's yeah, man. It's 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 2020. Like it's just, <laughs> you know, it's, it can't believe that it's 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 something that is still a thing. It's 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 wild. It's, but you know, yeah, yeah. It's it's been, it's been really been a really tough, I guess, last week. Just kind of you know see, seeing everything and seeing all the like re- reading up on it and everything. But yeah. Yeah, bro, you and I both, like, I, it, it's, it's been a crazy thing, and I'll definitely um, address that another time. But, uh, like I said, the creation of these live sessions were for the fans and the fans right, who, right. you know, um, love what we do and we love them for supporting what we do, you know what I mean? And um, I just wanted to go down memory lane, bro, because we, even though we didn't have that much scenes together, we definitely had some crazy moments together for sure, um, on and off the set. Um, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, what I mean, we, like you know, we didn't have a lot of a lot of stuff together, which is no. it's too bad. It really was. We, uh, yeah, because I feel like we we got along so well behind the camera, in our Ecuador trip and and everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because literally, um, bro, like, oh my gosh, memories are flushing through my head, bro. It's just like a yeah. a spinning wheel. Like, where do I stop on? But um, there'd literally be moments, bro, where we'd have scenes like your scene would be before mine or vice versa. And we'd just be chilling wherever we're set up. You know what I mean? Until you have to be called to set. And like, honestly, we'd be doing the most random, hilarious thing. I I honestly can't pinpoint, but nonetheless, to your point, you know, jokes, just bits. Yeah, man. man. (laughs) Yeah. Literally, literally just having a good time, bro. And just, just, just honestly, at times just being plain stupid and just (laughs) trying to make it entertainment. (laughs) Oh, yes, yes. I still have it, actually. I still have it. Oh, man, but... For those of you guys watching, Richard had uh, this magic hat that bestowed upon him great power. Indeed. Uh, this this is during the Ecuador trip. Yeah. We were walking, okay? So we were walking into the... Um, 
it's pretty much like a gift shop, right, Spence? It was like in, uh, in uh, Quito, in Ecuador. And, you know, I saw this hat and I'm like, man, I want this hat. Yeah, and I literally, yeah. yeah, man, I put it on and everyone thought I was joking. Like, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to buy this. Yeah. And they're like, nah, you're not going to, you're not going to, no, I'm going to buy it. And ever since I just wore it, I just repped it for the yeah. rest of the trip. It was it's a great iconic. time. Yeah. And um, bro, an iconic moment that the rest of the cast remembers is the voodoo doll you bought. You remember oh, that? Yeah. yeah. That was funny, <laughs> man. That oh, jeez. Bro, you scared, including me, everybody. I'm like, listen, oh, Spence. Yeah. I really got into the story, too. Like, I got, I got, I, I gathered everyone around. It was like, well, I, I remember really, really, like, amping it up. Like, it was just a, a real haunting tale I, I wove. <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. And everyone was so nervous because you brought it on the bus. We were all like, Spence, listen, man. <laughs> don't bring that damn thing on the bus. <laughs> and they're like, um... I'm going to bring it, guys. I'm going to bring it. And I'm like, holy crap. Oh, <laughs> boy. Okay. And because you kept amping it up, because you were just having a ball, bro. You are just having the best time. And I'm like, man, why Why is all this story sticking in my head right now? Why can't I just, like, ta-ha, laugh it off and move on? But now nah, it was sticking there. I'm like, oh, man, I'm nervous. Yeah. And I was, like, sitting, because it was you, me, Aaron, and Andre probably in the back, and we were all just talking and just doing whatever. Right. So... <laughs> and Eric as well too and literally I'd be just staring at the damn thing because you're holding it there's times where you're petting it randomly you're just being just stupid it was hilarious <laughs> but I'm like man damn just just chuck it out of the window or something get yeah. get that evil thing out of here but but yeah man that's uh for the fans as you can see we've <laughs> that's that's one like funny story that we always come back to man but there's many there's many down the list there's for sure the, the, the gold the golden stripe Oh we're, yes. We're... Oh wait, wait. There's some, me? there's some bit with that too, because Richard oh, for for Tiny you had the. Uh, the that's kind of right. Like mohawk kind of thing going on. That's right. That's right. When I got rid of it, you should have seen some fans' reactions. Like, no, why are you getting rid of the gold? I'm like, listen, it's, it, we had to move on. You know what I mean? Right. We, we had a great run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? And now it's time to just to move on, bro. But, yeah. homie, can you remember? Because uh, we've been doing this for every live session. Can you remember a memorable moment uh, off and on the set for you, personally? Memorable moments off and on the set. <clears throat> well, uh, I think. We, we had to, I mean, obviously the Ecuador trip was, was just unreal. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, like like just a a crazy like eye-opening experience and uh and and also like we i think with that well, if we weren't all like re like like real tight before that we just became like you know crazy close on that trip oh yeah it was great man yeah and uh <clears throat> you know we, we we would also like go out in toronto sometimes and like so it's weird though because it, it does feel like such a long time ago now actually thinking thinking back on it it does yeah man yeah but uh and man filming that show was so much fun because we were all like for the most part like pretty like green we we're pretty like new to to like being on a set and like acting in front of a camera and you know i know i was i was so used to like theater and like musicals and stuff and, and true with the grad it's, it's funny now watching it watching the show back and it's like oh it, you know like there's the choices you make as like when you're uh you know, new, new to like acting and like, and, and like, oh, and like the stories are so great on that show. Right. There's, they're so uh, like cemented in our, in our like society, like in our culture and stuff. And yeah, nothing but, nothing but the best to say about, about uh, my experience with Degrassi. It was, it was wonderful. Second high school, really. True. Well said. Yeah, man. Like, honestly, it, it's been on Okay. This is a very cool thing. Actually, Spence, um, everyone who's been on the Ecuador trip, which is pretty much the majority of us, actually, for offset experiences, they couldn't help, including myself, couldn't help but just going back to that. You know what I mean? Like, like really, how can you not? You know, like, like that trip, man, like, it, it was just across the board. It, it, it really made all of us closer, for sure, for sure, for sure. And I would say... My favorite moment, actually, was when we took on uh, the locals in the soccer game. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes, I do. Man, 
Yeah, and we had to wear oh yeah, and we had to wear rain boots, man. We couldn't even <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they had just normal sneakers on. I'm like, yo, you expect us to play how? And for fans who did not know, who don't know actually, um, it was scorching hot there. It was to the point where we were playing under um pretty much I guess a veranda. Like it was it, it's where they play soccer in general, but it was luckily covered. The sun was covered luckily. And but you still felt the intensity of the heat. Like, it, oh, you yeah. couldn't really escape it. Yeah. Um, you're pretty much escaping the rays of the sun. At that point, it's just humidity. Like, you're breathing in thick, heavy, hot air. Like it's, And oh. we were playing soccer. It was the most... I had never sweated that much in my life, honestly. It was just... Oh, yeah. Like, literally, that trip, easily. And then playing soccer with rain boots on, like, it was tough. Um, but nonetheless, it was a lot of fun. Um, I think, uh, I think Spence, if you remember Jamie, uh, AKA Yael, she was like a mother pretty much. She was sitting on the, uh, on the bleachers and she had like a little, she, that kid must've been like one or two years old max, yeah. just like cradling while we're playing like, go oh, guys. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. This is nuts. Yeah. But like that, that for me, that was a, that was definitely a great moment for sure. Off the set with everybody on set, man, like. Like, where do you start? Like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I can't even. There's, there's too many moments, man. There really is. There really is too many moments. I, to your point, Spence, because I'm kind of piggybacking off of you. Um, uh, there's just like there was never really a dull time on on set for me. Really, like I can't really no. pinpoint. You know. You know, I, I guess one that I kind of use a couple times is just when um, uh, this includes you as well, where we were considered like more so the senior class right. with, you know, Amir and Dante and, you know, Chelsea and all them like coming in as the newer characters on the next uh, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the next class, you know, so that that transition was a very heartwarming and just satisfying moment where it's like, OK, now it's us. Now we're, you know, pretty much leading the charge and. That that for me, I would say, was easily one of my most memorable, for sure. Just getting that experience, you know, is what I would say. What would you say was your favorite storyline that, that your character kind of embarked on? <sighs> favorite storyline? You know what? I would say, I would say the Vince and Zig storyline, you know. Uh, mm. Zig had to live with me and Vince and... I had to decide between my best friend and my brother. You know what I mean? Like, in a sense, my brother and my brother. You know what I mean? Like, um, and having to do that, it was such a, like, for an actor, it was such a cool thing to experience and kind of diving into deeply. But then also just, like, the turmoil. Like, what do you do? You, you got your best friend, and then, you, and then you got your blood. You know what I mean? Like, what do you do in that scenario? Um, and the cool thing is with that is that Tiny is a very intelligent guy, thankfully. <laughs> um, he knew that, Vince was encouraging him in the worst kind of way when it came to selling drugs and being involved in gangs. Like it wasn't a healthy lifestyle for Tiny, and he knew that. But at the same time, it's his brother. Mm. He has to be there to help him out. He's his only family he has. You mm. know what I'm saying? But then at the same time, you got your best friend who's telling right. you, "Listen, man, this ain't the right way. We can come up with other uh, ways to live. We'll figure it out. Don't worry, I got you." And he has got me for all these years, but. You know, it's it's that was a very great a lot uh, of turmoil going on. Yeah, yeah, man. That that was that was my personal favorite. But what about you, bro? Um, you know what? I like, I loved. I'm just like thinking back on it. Was like when I first w was on the show, and uh, I had this like plot with uh, with Sarah Fisher's character. Mm -hmm. and it was so like unclear whether it was played for laughs or played seriously and it was just really really funny like, like I don't know like it was uh like I, I was like on I was on some video game and uh and and I and I, and I like had like kind of like I was like flirting with her on the game or something and but I had this one scene wow. and it was in my first real like like scene I got to do on the show and I and I just like played it so angry and then like i guess that's how they like kind of began to mold the character of hunter because he was like like okay we'll just make him like real angsty and then it kind of like it, it built from there but uh 
but yeah man it was it, because like watching it um it's also weird it's weird watching yourself when you're like it, it's like a time capsule right you get to see yourself grow up like i re i like i really was like you know what i mean like i was it's, it's weird watching yourself when you're like actually a child like <laughs> it is yeah man cool man yeah. But uh, actually, you know what? Uh, you brought it up because I wanted to touch this with you because um, cause we were doing a partner thing. The Grassy and Kids Help Phone was doing a partner thing. Um, we still are, but, you know, we made it more official a couple, just a week ago, I think. And mental health, you know what I mean? I would consider um, um, Hunter as a character. I had to deal with those mental health issues, as you know. Absolutely. And, you know, with his anger issues and just anxiety, all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to ask you, because you're representing a real demographic, you know what I mean, of young uh, teenagers who had to go through that during high school, and it was very tough for them. Um, you know, how was it for you to play that role? Did you, uh, you know, have to do research on it, or did you feel it out and just, you know, like, how, how was that for you overall? Um, it's, a, it's a really, it's a big uh, responsibility, you know, and, uh, and it wasn't taken lightly, and, 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 you know the great thing about the about Degrassi is that it doesn't shy away from most topics, and um, I think that with Hunter specifically in like next class, he kind of had that uh, a very like poignant like storyline which is reflective of like what is going what was and is going on in uh, in the world and like and it, and, I, and I you know it, it wasn't taken lightly. I remember I did a lot of. A lot of like what, like watching documentaries and like reading up on, you know, um, like school shooting kind of like really really dark dark kind of stuff. Oh. And, uh, and yeah, man. But it, it, this, the show does a great job of kind of like, you know, sh shedding light on those darker kind of um, topics. And as far as as far as you know, mental health goes, mental illness, it, it was uh, you know, really important to kind of um, do as much research on that as possible. And uh -huh. that's something that's something that I that that's like you know, it, aside aside from Degrassi, that's a topic that's really really like important to me and um, something that I really like advocate for. And uh, and yeah, man, it, you know, it's 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 a uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a, not a, I'm, I'm really like I'm I'm strange at like speaking out loud for some reason about about these things because they're really really important to me. I think, but yeah, it uh, yeah man, it's a really important topic. Oh no, of course, bro. And I wanted to ask you about that because again, first of all, it's not easy. And the great thing again to touch on what I talked about earlier about transparency on the realness that people go through. Um, and in, and I must say, and a lot of the fans were saying as well that you played that so convincingly like bro i was there with you on set when you were getting mentally prepared for scenes or you had to be so locked in emotionally to the point where it's like you couldn't talk to anybody else you just had to be in your zone and i'm like man that's that's some dedication right there so you definitely portrayed that in a way that really really resonated with people and you know a lot of people will definitely agree with me for sure mm -hmm. because um uh especially when uh, when Hunter was uh, brought into, you know, he was brought in to be, to seeing the doctors and stuff like that. And the doctors are talking to him like he was crazy and stuff. He's like, no, I'm not crazy. Like all that stuff. Like you'd think, you know, storyline wise, okay, you see Hunter leaves and then you just don't hear about him until he comes back. They literally went with you, was there when you were in that, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. just showing the ins and outs, the right. the harsh reality of it, you know what I mean? And all that stuff. So uh, that was not an easy storyline to to do, and you did a great man. So I just wanted to give you a shout that, out for that. I appreciate um, that, man. Yeah, I, man. I, I think I think you and you, you, you know, you can definitely uh, contest to this. It's always it's always fun to fun and and like fun as an actor to have like challenges, right? And like that, yeah. that was something I was really like new new uh, new to acting on when I started on Degrassi, and uh, at least on camera, and it was just like a really fun training ground to kind of like get to experiment and try different things and uh and yeah man it, but, but it's it's always fun to get to try and play like we like stretch your your type a little bit you know what i mean oh of course 1000 percent, bro and, and the thing is like 
Um, we talked about it before, um, and you touched on it during the live session that um, we both came from like uh, theater, musical theater backgrounds. Right. You know what I mean? And that, how was, I know what my transition was like, but how was the transition from going from the stage to behind the camera? It's, uh, I mean, man, I was, I, and even uh, like, uh, but that's why, you know, when I watch a lot of, a lot of the show, like you can see that I, I was such a theater kid. Cause like, you know, you, you really, you're going from like playing to like a, a massive, you know, or not massive, but like, a, you know, an auditorium and you got to like sell it to the people in the back to like, you know, you, now it's got to be kind of real and it's getting, it, it's a, uh, it's a fun transition, but it, it was tough for me. I remember for sure. Cause I was so used to just being like really over dramatic and like singing everything and, <laughs> and, and then, yeah. And yeah. So, but what about you? Man, to your point, bro, because you know, you know, you're taught to perform to the furthest person in the back of the room. You know what I mean? So projection, over-pronunciation, articulation, all that kind of stuff. I remember literally being in the room with Larissa Mayer, casting director, and she was telling me, Richard, you over-pronunciate your words too much. Just let the camera do the work and let it just slide right. through. And, just... and I'm like, man, I was trained for years, bro, at doing it a certain way and then getting thrown behind the camera and being like the crazy thing is and fans for those of you who don't know uh being a theater actor going into a behind the camera actor or film actor you have to give the same kind of emotion but do it smaller so think about what i just said it's literally like if you're having a shouting scene you got to shout quieter but still have the same intensity it made no sense to me in the beginning and still even now i have challenges with it but nonetheless it it really does help to have some kind of uh, background with acting in general theater really because then you have the, there's certain ways and techniques you can get into a character get into a role you know what i mean and if you need to be deep and angry and dark or whatever you do what you have to do to get in that space and then you uh and then you show it you know what i'm saying so i'm thankful for that for sure for sure but the transition bro it was like yeah it was it was hard man it was really really hard even Stefan and you know, Phil, all the directors that we had, they're like, Rich, great job, but just, just bring it down a little bit more. I'm like, crap, here we go. I'm stuck I, again. I, I'd rather hear that than, than the opposite, I think. You and I both. Yeah, I bring it down instead of like, come on, do more, do more, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, I was just thinking, though, you're, you, have a, you have a blessing that you, uh, you still have, like, a great singing voice. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> Because, you know, I love doing musicals and stuff when I was younger. And then, like, you know, puberty just rocked my vocal cords. <laughs> and, and, and now I'm just like, it's a horrifying prospect to listen to me sing. So, so <laughs> consider yourself very, very, um, I don't want to say lucky, because you probably worked a lot through your, you know, your vocal change. But uh, mm -hmm. I didn't. And, and yeah, so, you know. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate it, bro. But wait, were, was was I don't think Hunter was involved in the in the theater in uh, Captain Who in any way, was he? No, no, that's no. that wasn't his scene. You know, he's he's the guy. Oh, okay, who, fair. He was setting up the lighting, something like maybe, that. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I was I was like that would have been an irony if you know somehow that inter you know interwoven with your actual character that'd have been something. But okay, but yeah, man. Um, no, I appreciate, it, bro. Like. I, again, like I said, I'm trying to pursue, um, pursue being a music artist as well. So training on my voice is definitely a top, top priority for me. Like I said, with being on the lockdown and everything, that's what I, I'm taking the time to do that more often than where before, because, you know, auditions alone can take up a lot of time. And especially if you're fortunate enough to book something and be on set, eats up your time. Like, like no tomorrow. It, as soon as you get home, script, sleep, back at it again, you know? So uh, and you're not better than most. And speaking of that, bro, um, uh, is there anything, uh, have you done any like writing? Do you do any writing or is it mainly just like, you know, acting or any personal projects that you might be doing low key? Uh, low key. Uh, I have taken writing classes. I took one recently where I went down to, to, for pilot season down to LA and I took a writing class there and with my buddy. I'd love to get into it, but it feels like, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, uh, you, I'll, I'll write a page and then I'll throw it out. It's, 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 it's something that, uh, 
it feels like it's it's personal at the moment, but maybe one day. You know what I mean? What about you? You, you do a lot of writing. I guess um, music, music, obviously, but uh, requires. For script, the the closest thing I did was just this was this um comedy thing I was doing called Corona Chronicles, where I was just I doing this. like or, yeah. No, what what was the one I saw? Sorry. Anyways, go on. Yeah, <laughs> no worries, bro. It was just me doing some silly voice characters or random characters into one scenario. And honestly, that was just more so for me until I decided to post it. And then people wanted to see it. So I just kind of riffed on it, bro. But that was the closest thing to my own personal projects in regards to writing that I did. Right. Um, but I'm, to be honest, I'm more so the actor, bro. I like receiving other people's stuff and acting it out and and um, oh, oh, actually, this is a question I want to ask you personally, actually. I waited for you to actually ask this one. Um, uh, a role that you would have loved, regardless of movie, Degrassi or not, a role that you would have loved to have played? Any role that you can think of? Oh, you know, that's such a hard question. I've, I've, I've thought about this before, but the thing is, is like any role that exists now, I wouldn't want to just be like, yeah, I'd love to be that. And then they just kind of like be doing an impression of that. You know what I mean? Mm, fair so it's there's something about like you know obviously there's roles i love i love uh, i love jesse pinkman in breaking bad you know what i mean i love mm. uh, i love marty mcfly in back to the future i like a little spider-man you know but uh -huh. at the end of the day it's like hey would i just be like doing my best uh doing my best aaron paul impression and like you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah but i, I don't know uh Spider-Man scene. I, you know what, though? I would probably, if I could choose one, now that I gave that answer, I'm going to just go completely against it and say that I would choose Harry Osborn. Oh, that's maybe a good match. Be a bit antagonistic, maybe, to, uh, to Spider-Man, to Tom Holland. Okay. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Fans, let us, let us know how you feel about that. I can see that for sure, bro. <laughs> Another thing I can actually see, and someone I think mentioned it already, um... I see you as a young Joker, bro. I'm not even going to lie. I see you as, oh, like, a... You can mess around with that for sure. And because, to be honest, like, playing Joker would be so much fun. Oh. I, I think that would be epic just did to be able to... New, did you see the Joaquin Phoenix movie? The Joaquin Phoenix Joker? The new one? No, like, how recent? What, what are you talking? Oh, well, I guess not that recent, actually, now. Oh, okay. I mean, the, mo the most recent Joker movie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 1,000%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Great movie, huh? Man... Man, I'm 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 a fan of Joker in general. He's my favorite um like uh cartoon villain, period. Um so when I was watching that and I was seeing like his story and how he came to be, you know, it was very, very cool because he became sympathetic for him. He wasn't just evil for the sake of being evil. Right. You saw where he was going through, you saw his condition, you saw it, it was just and man, the performance wow. Well, really good. Uh, yeah, he's really good, bro. He's but, probably my um, favorite actor, I would say. I, I, really? I would say so, yeah. I can, I can see that, bro. I, that, hats off to that performance, yo. I, I can easily see why. But that leads into another question I want to ask. Before I get to the fans here, for them to ask their questions as well, Degrassi-related. Yes. Um, so, homie, your favorite, your top three movies, if you can. I'm putting you on the spot. That might be hard for you. Well, this is a tough one. You know, yeah, and, and I, you know, uh, I one hundred percent, A Clockwork Orange would be on. Oh, okay, time. nice. I think that's yes. my favorite movie. Yep. Uh, just a real, uh, you know, Kubrick masterpiece. Absolutely. Um, what else would I choose? Uh, Malcolm McDowell, wonder... man. Nice choice. Oh my God, he's great. Malcolm McDowell, man. Yeah, trust me, that's that's a that's a very good one. Sorry, what's your next one? <laughs> Reminiscent. Uh, I'm happy. I'm happy you know and love and appreciate that movie because it's. Great. Oh yeah. Uh, geez, I, you want to choose one that be, because if we're doing it like the desert island kind of setup, uh -huh. then you, you want to choose one of every genre almost. You Fair. Because a lot of my favorite movies are dark, but uh -huh. I do. But you know, I would want like a comedy in there, like a This Is the End or something. Ah, fair. Just so, you know, I have the option there. And then yep. I would probably choose like a Nolan movie last, like uh, maybe Inception or The Prestige. Nice. Yeah. Nice, fan of Nolan. Okay, okay, yeah. I like that. What about you? 
Oh, man. Here we go. See, putting people on the spot and having a switch up. Okay. Um, <laughs> one of them for sure would have to be Goodfellas. I'm a fan of mobster movies. Um, oh, yeah. And Goodfellas, to me, I'm sorry, people, but for me, I think Goodfellas is better than The Godfather, for me personally. I agree. Um, uh, Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, like, Ray Liotta, like, come on, man. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, mm. those three together, man. And I recently, uh, well, I recently watched The Irishman too, uh, as well. And I'm, like, just to see all those legends on the screen at the same time. Uh, I it's seen on the Irishman yet. Is it good? I, I loved it, bro. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm biased because I'm a fan of those, the actors as well as the premise of it being a mobster movie, you know? So, oh, so good. Uh, so, Goodfellas. Um, oof, let's see. I would say I, Children of God is definitely a great one for me. Um, yeah, that one is uh, based out of the uh, Brazilian favelas, actually. Um, I can't remember the director. I should, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. But uh, nonetheless, he hired the locals in the area to play the characters, and it was super authentic. And they just like, and then none of them had acting um, experience. They just were given the scripts, and I guess because they were so in their natural environment, they were just able to just do what they did. You know what I mean? And it was honestly very impressed. Um, and lastly, I'm going to switch things up. I'm going to switch things up a little bit because I am a fan of uh, martial arts or action films. Right. And I would say The Raid. Oh, yeah. Epic. Yeah. Epic from start to finish. I highly recommend for anybody who's into martial arts uh, movies. Uh, this is more of an Indonesian, I believe. Um, but, man, like the fight sequences, the storyline, it, it can be very gory at times mind you it can get kind of intense but nonetheless from start to finish you're getting quality that, that's what that, i saw that in high school actually i don't I'm, I'm i'm foggy on it though i need to rewatch it but i remember being blown away man it's 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 pretty epic i wanted to kind of do things outside of the box like i could have said parasite i could have said you know whatever else comes to mind honestly there's so many to be honest mm -hmm. those are my three favorites for this session right now and then all of a sudden i know it's going to change but same here, same yeah, here. Man. I have a new yeah, movie. Bro. Yeah. But uh, let's see. Let's see what the fans were saying. Your fans, keep sending your questions. Let's see. I saw one that was very good. Ah, uh, crap. There's a, lot, there's a lot of stuff here. Oh, my gosh. Missing Degrassi, of course. Of course, we all feel you. Trust me. Um, Rocky Horror Picture Show, Mean Girls, and Billy Madison. Great movies. Oh, yeah. Well, well said. Um... <laughs> Oh, man. Wow, there's a lot going on here. Let's see. <laughs> Trying to find. Keep sending questions, people. Keep sending oh, them questions. Saw... Richard, you, you, of course you saw Avengers Endgame. Oh, yeah. 1,000%, man. Oh, man. But listen, you know what? Hold on. Since you brought that up, okay, I need a rant for two seconds. All right? For two seconds. As a kid, even till now, one of my favorite Marvel characters, Spence, has been the Incredible Hulk. Okay, right. they've done him a huge injustice. Okay, <laughs> a huge injustice. The man looks like he works at IKEA for crying out loud. I don't know what they've done. They've really messed it up. The man's taking selfies and all that stuff. I'm like, wh who? And and they had the great opportunity for redemption. Then it's Smart Hulk, man. It's from the comics. It's oh, man. I, I know, but I'm like, I was hoping for some kind of redemption, like maybe a rematch between him. You know what I mean? I'm like, right. oh, my gosh. Something, yeah. bro. Something. But <sighs> it is what yeah. it is. It is what yeah, it is, I, man. I, I, the best part of the Hulk is kind of that, that like, the Jekyll and Hyde, the, like, you know, fighting the monster. So I understand how that could be upsetting to a Hulk fan. But yeah. I think for for the sake of moving the plot forward, they needed they needed Bruce Banner, and they needed yeah they, they they did they definitely did that that's the thing where I'm like it, I think it upset me more because I understand why they did it if it was just senseless and they decided to do it just cause I'd have been like okay no nah, I'm not accepting that but oh man he Fair. just got he, he got but Spence Spence he got his ass whipped by Thanos man it wasn't even. Oh, yeah. Well, the man fell asleep after. <laughs> like, what? 
the, the power stone versus a bit of gamma radiation you're, you're talking about you know night and day. It's, it's, there's no competition fair fair i wasn't expecting to win i was not expecting to win but at least a better fight than that like you know thanos especially in the comics he he avoided the hulk because of his power not that he was scared to lose to him but mm. it, it was a scenario where he's like man i've like I'm not feeling fighting this guy right now. He's just going to hes gonna be too much for me right now for me to beat him. Let me just, you know, avoid him. But, like I said, it is what it is. Yeah. I accept it. <laughs> uh, uh, but actually, let me ask you, my friend, since I, uh, you're a comic, you're a Marvel fan, right. um, who do you think should be, before we get into the Degrassi co- uh, uh, segments, because this, ner- this is us nerd- nerding out a little bit it's here. Been, it's been a while, guys. You know, we need to catch up about all I, things. I, ha- I have to do this, so bear with me, y'all. Bear with me. <laughs> um, I personally think it should be Doctor Doom, but uh, a supervillain that hasn't been presented yet, all right, in the MCU, that you mm. think should be. Mm. I mean... <clears throat> The grand threat, right? You've already you've gotten Thanos out of the way, so now you need a new big threat, right? Uh, That's the correct. obvious thought would be Galactus. Yeah. Right? Yep. You know, they're, they're introducing the Fantastic Four. You could, you know, weave in the Silver Surfer and the, the Herald of Galactus. Get that whole thing going and make that the next big bad, right? True. But as, far, as far as, like, a villain in, the, in, in Marvel that I would love to see, uh, Victor Von Doom is definitely up there. Mm-hmm. But... Oh, man, there's so many good Spider-Man villains that I really like. Oh man, I'd love to. I'd love to see uh, like Venom done. V- Venom like versus Peter Parker. I think that would be a great. Mm. Like, you know, just visually. Uh, yeah, that'd be very cool. But I, I would say, I would say, a villain that I want to see the most is probably Doctor Doom. Thought so. Yeah, man. Um. For fellow fans of Marvel, Doctor Ve- like Doctor Doom, yo, he, this man is a beast. Mm. Okay, people don't fully realize how like the generic fan. I'm not even talking about the in depth fans because they know what I'm talking about here. But the generic fan doesn't truly know how Doctor Doom. Like I can, I can, we can have a whole session on him alone. But oh, yeah. like that man right there. Yeah. Oh yeah, like badass. Truly badass for sure, man. That's something I personally would like to see. I I agree with you. I think Galactus Silver Surfer, the whole you know, especially since Fantastic Four is in the loop, I do think that will be the case. Um, mm. I'm personally waiting on the X Men to be introduced into the MCU. Uh, I'm curious to see who the next Wolverine will be because you have to cast a Wolverine at some point. Yeah. Um, I'm really curious about all this stuff. Um, I'm really excited for it because like, damn. They have access to everything now. So I'm like, you know, Spider Man is still dicey, but I mean, but still, like, it's was, gonna be pretty cool. I was tempted to kind of say, hey, you know what? Endgame was a great wrap up. I'm kind of, I think I'm done with with the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. But, oh. but I mean, I gotta see Fantastic Four. I gotta yeah, see man. I gotta see yeah. Iron Man. I gotta see it. So yeah. Yeah, bro. The possibilities now with storylines and just movies, like it, it, it's it's endless at this point. What they can do, crossover is like, come on, it's it's, it's very exciting stuff. But um, but yeah, sorry, y'all. Um, let's <laughs> anyways. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what y'all were asking up in here. Um, what do you think of when? Oh wow, that's pretty deep. Uh, double Emmy. Uh, crying scenes. Uh, what do you think of when doing crying scenes, or what? What? What's your strategy, I guess, Spence? If you, um, I think you've had a couple. I know I've had. It's I've done it differently, like different times, like different, um, <clears throat> different times. You know, you, you, they do give you like this thing if you need it, like if you want it, like a, like a menthol kind of stick, and it can kind of get tears going. That way, you can you know be focused a bit more on like what the way you want to see you know if you want to make things a little add a little gravy to the scene true <laughs> uh but you know it, it depends you know I, i've probably I've, I've tried i've tried that i've tried like actually you know what i mean really like getting emotional i've tried a bunch of stuff man it's all mm-hmm. it's all 
it's all it's fun to just experiment and try different things right definitely yeah you and you and i both bro um yeah it, like i had to use the sticks a couple of times because sometimes honestly for the fans like we have to do that countless times it's not like you just do it the one time and then you're good you have to do it from different angles you gotta sometimes you mess up a line so you gotta do it over again it, it's it can be emotionally exhausting right. so just for that sake most of the time i try to use the sticks um if not then i try to get into a darker place where i can access those kind of emotions easier right. but um that's pretty much yeah that's pretty much the same thing for me as well spence but because of time we're gonna speed through these questions here it's gonna be a quick answers let's do it um Okay, so I like this one from Kayla. Okay, um, who do you guys ship your characters with on the show? Hmm. Oh, uh, Hunter and Yeah, oh, easily. True, true. Yeah. And for me, it would be it would be Shay. We had a great time, even yeah. though the love triangle with the whole Lola thing. I think Shay and Tiny were were forever. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'll stick with that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, from Matt James, do you think what uh, do you think Hunter would have got back with Yael in season five and six if there was one? I do actually. There was a scene that got cut from the final. Actually, I'm not even sure if I can say this, but I'm just gonna say it. Uh, there was a scene that got cut from the final uh, episode of Degrassi Next Class, where uh, after their kind of fight and Hunter, Hunter's, uh, you know, insensitive comments, uh, they reconcile. And and yeah, I for sure think that they would have worked it out because you know, they were they were a good match. Dope, yo. All right, we're going to blow through this. Um, what's your favorite season that you were in? Um, hmm. I like the next class, This uh, the, the season one. Next class, season one. Season one. For me, I would say season two. I think I was able to get a bit more storylines that were a lot more, like, just just different from what I, how I started off, so it was pretty cool to to do that for me personally. It was, it was a lot of fun regardless on all the seasons, but I would think season two for me would be, would be the most ideal. Um, I mean, this rituals of getting into care. Oh, that's a good one from uh, Meggie. Hopefully I say that right. Um, do either of you have any techniques or rituals of getting into your character? It's a good one. Hmm. Uh, it, dep it depends on the, on the role. I mean, if it's something that's like pretty far from who you are, then like, I, I'd like to like, maybe, you know, stay in the voice or kind of like listen to music to kind of stay in that. But if, if you're playing something that's like a version of you, you don't have to go, it's not that deep. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it depends. Mm, yeah, and for me, honestly, because when you do it so for so long, you get caught in the same kind of, you know, it's just like, you know, when you're going to work, you know, you have the same kind of tendencies and you do the same things. If the scenes that we're doing are a bit, more intense and normal then you'd probably have to get deep or maybe if it, if it's like i remember with eric for example we had to do a scene where me he was high and me and him had to have a conversation uh sorry confrontation and he was just watching a ton of like like epic fail videos on youtube like throughout the day like just getting himself giggly and laughing and stuff where right. he'd get himself into like a high state so honestly it's more so the premise that your character's in that kind of dictates it. If it's just a relatively normal storyline, it's pretty much what we normally do. I can't remember, honestly. It's been so, so long, but, um, mm. but uh, nonetheless, uh, let's see. Wow, jeez. Time is freaking flying. So, Spence, Yo. you, had, you have the epic opportunity right here, man. Uh, for closing out. Oh, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Just uh, <laughs> uh, closing out the Degrassi live sessions. This started literally in the beginning of the month, bro. And we're ending it off here with you. Um, you know, it's crazy that an hour has blown by. That's, that's, that's nuts. Um, uh, Instagram lives actually cut it off after hours. So that's why I want to make sure you right. get your last word in. So homie, for people at home, you know, uh, during this time, what would you suggest to them to get through the quarantine, to get through what's going on? What would you suggest to them, homie? I mean, is this is this a TF to promote Degrassi or not? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, what would I suggest to them? You know, just, just, get, just spend spend time with your fam and uh, you know, around the people that love and care about you. Um, stay informed. Uh, 
and well, have watch a lot of watch a lot of movies. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, great suggestions, bro. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah man. But um, but I wanted to say, especially uh, Spence. Thank first of all, thank you for joining us, bro. Because honestly, the fans, as you know, bro, they they've been waiting for anything Degrassi related for such a long time. Uh, they there, there's no there hasn't been a solid you know, end to things where they can move on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, because there hasn't been any say that the show is completely finished. So for a fan and for any fan of any show, th there's no closure, right? So it was really hard for them to be like, yo, what, what's going on with season five and six? What's happening? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And unfortunately, neither of us really know what's going on. Uh, and especially now it's harder because of the situation because no sets are being used right now. Nothing is being in production aside from what's already been filmed. So... We have no clue, but at least, at the very least, these Degrassi live sessions have been giving the fans what I believe they truly deserve. Um, they've been supporting us from day one, bro, and without them, there is no Degrassi, so uh, it's great that we're able to give back through these live sessions to give them some kind of escape from what's going on, and that's been the intention. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, with us being on here, we just wanted to show them that we appreciate them so much, you know what I mean? And that's the goal, bro. We, we, we do it for them as well as ourselves. And, and, you know, we hope that our performances on the show give them happiness, you know, and, and all that, all, all that kind of good stuff. You know what I mean? But, right. uh, but yeah, man, anything else you wanted to add? Very well said. Yeah, man. I, I just want to thank you for, for having me. It was just good to catch up when this is all done. You know, we gotta, we gotta all get together. I, I miss the, miss the group. Yeah, man, you and I both, bro. We'll definitely catch up for sure, bro. Like, that's not even a question. Uh, as right. soon as we're allowed to, you know what I mean? I'm down right. for when you are, bro. Sounds good, dude. Yeah, man. But, yo, Spence, aside from talking, aside from catching up, bro, thank you so much for joining us. The fans Absolutely. definitely appreciated it. Uh, fans, as we do every live session, send this brother a ton of heart emojis because we love him. He, we know He knows we love him, so we just got to show that to him, okay? Just flood it, flood it, flood it. You know how it is. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Spence, thanks again, bro. Um, we'll be in touch. You know it. Uh, all the best, you know what I mean? Because, you, you, listen, the only reason your, your career, bro, is going to just continue to flourish as soon as things come back. So Likewise, you're too talented too, for it not to happen. So, I mean, Appreciate thank it. you so much, bro. Right, we'll man. talk. Yeah. Peace. All right, homie. Whew. Oh, my gosh. It's crazy, everyone. It really is crazy. That was the legend himself, Spencer. Spencer Mack, okay? That's my boy right there, man. It was great to really catch up with him. It was really nice. It was heartwarming. Um, but, yeah, to the fans, um, honestly, honestly, excuse me, um, thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining in. Um, I hope you all have enjoyed this. Honestly, it's just... I, I really wanted to show you guys that uh, not only me, but the entire fans, not, excuse me, the entire cast, we all appreciate you. We love you all dearly. We know how much you want more of the show because, you know, it's a great thing. Who doesn't want so much of a great thing, right? Um, we appreciate you so much. We love you all so much. Um, like I said, only because my personal focus has been shifted to what's currently going on. Uh, you never know. Maybe the live sessions will come back. You know what I mean? Because you all deserve it. You all are, like I said, from day one, the best fan base on the planet. No one can say anything at that. If anyone says otherwise, get at me. I'll defend all of y'all. So, like I said, thank you so much. And keep up the support. And like I said, the times that we live in, we need you to continue that love and support of each other. I look at every, uh, every single one of you equally. I look at all of you the same in regards to equality. Um, Degrassi represents love and unity between everybody. Gender, race, creed, religion, all that. And you all are exemplary people showing that on a regular basis. And I thank you all so much for that. So this is my way of giving to you. This is our way, the cast, the Degrassi family, giving back to you amazing fans. Because you are the reason why we do this. You're the reason why it's still alive and hopefully will come back. I'm, I'm bringing the bandwagon. Let's make Degrassi come back to whatever capacity. I only have 30 seconds left, y'all. But like I said, I love you all. I thank you all. 
Uh, for those of you, I'm going to go back on live just now uh, to talk about a couple of other things, a bit more intense. But like I said, I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Seriously. Without you. You know what I mean? Uh, so love you all. Um, thank you. Thank you.